this webinar um, on immigrant entrepreneurship in the Central Valley Resource and Regional Collaboration. Um, it's an event that we are having thanks to the participation of two great partners that we have found in our efforts to work on the issue of immigrant entrepreneurship. Um, and we're going to have uh, two really wonderful presentations by colleagues who have helped us, um, Civic, move along in the process of developing opportunities for self-employment and immigrant entrepreneurship to the immigrant families that we work with. Um, Civic is an organization that uh, only began to work on entrepreneurship two years ago with a pilot project on immigrant entrepreneurship. We were able to establish that project and to run it uh, over the past couple of years, thanks to the collaboration with multiple partner organizations that contributed to the success of the program. But we feel that you know, we're still newbies in this area of work. We have much to learn, but we have also found that there is a tremendous amount of interest among the immigrants that we work with in the issues of, uh, of self-employment and entrepreneurship. When we open up the process for um, enrollment in our entrepreneurship classes, the enrollment has to shut down after only a few days because there is a lot of interest among people. So we know that we're not able to meet the demand that exists. Um, and we also, as we, since we're newbies, we're also learning a lot from the collaboration with the partner organizations. And as part of that process of learning, uh, one of our roles as an organization in Civic is to also share those resources and partnerships that we have with other colleagues that may also be interested in those issues. And that's the reason why we have this uh, webinar today, to share with you the wonderful work that is being done by two great organizations. One is Santa Clara University's My Own Business Institute, and the other one is the Build From Within Alliance that, uh, although based in Minneapolis, has partner organizations, member organizations in many states of the union. So these two uh, partners are really amazing. Um, We're learning a lot from them. They're helping us to develop our own internal organizational capacity. And we wanted to share this information, this context with you. So to see if you can also, if you're interested in developing the partnerships with them to do so as well. But beyond that, um, given the fact that we have found a great deal of interest among immigrants in the Central Valley for these types of opportunities, we also want to see with our partner organizations, um, how many of you are also interested whether you already have a program or whether you're interested in developing something along these lines in establishing our own regional dialogue to help our organizations, to help the communities that we serve um, individually or, or collectively and see how we can build the overall capacity in the Central Valley to assist immigrant families that are interested, that are willing to become involved in entrepreneurial self-employment opportunities. That's what we hope to accomplish in today's webinar. Two great presentations, the beginning of a regional dialogue on immigrant entrepreneurship collaboration. Um, and I'd like to begin by introducing to you, well, let me go to the agenda for today. The agenda is very simple. Um, just our introduction that we just did right now, uh, the brief overview of our involvement in entrepreneurship. And we'll begin the webinar today with the presentation by two um, wonderful colleagues, as I mentioned before, Drew Starberg and Trish Calva Schmidt from Santa Clara University's My Own Business Institute. Very briefly about both of these great colleagues. Drew Starberg, PhD, is the Executive Director of Moby, My Own Business Institute, Santa Clara University. And he's also Professor of Information Systems and Analytics. Since 1987, he has served the university in many roles, including as Director of the Food and Agribusiness Institute and as the Dean of the Levy School of Business. In 2021, Dr. Starbird was appointed Senior Fellow in the Institute for Regional Studies at Joint Ventures, Silicon Valley. As Executive Director of Moby, Dr. Starbird leads the university's most aggressive and widespread online education initiative. Moby's mission is to start businesses that create jobs around the world by providing education and training to aspiring entrepreneurs. Every year, please pay attention, every year, <laughs> Moby reaches tens of thousands of entrepreneurs in over 200 different countries, not 200 different individuals, 200 different countries throughout the world. Drew Starbird joined SEU faculty in 1987 
teaching operations management, statistics, and complex decision making in the university's undergraduate, graduate, and executive education programs, and receiving numerous awards for his teaching and for his scholarship. His research interests include quality control and management, supply chain management, food safety and policy relating to nutritional security. And Professor Starbert holds a BS from the University of California, Davis, an MBA from Santa Clara University, and his PhD from Cornell University. Trish Kalva Schmidt is partnership and LMS lead for SEU Mobi. Trish serves as an educational consultant specializing in program strategy and development, including curriculum, communication, and organizational planning, leadership, community outreach, partner building and collaboration, learning management systems, LMS, and project management with an emphasis on entrepreneurship, education, and training. She is currently working with Santa Clara University and Mobi, focusing on curriculum development, the learning management system, and on partnerships. Trish has held teaching and staff positions at Santa Clara University, the University of Memphis, the University of Arkansas, and Utah State University. She's the graduate of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse with a Bachelor of Science in Sociology and the University of Wisconsin Whitewater with a Master of Science in Corporate Communications. Uh, a lot of experience, a lot of really great work. Trish and Drew, thank you very much for agreeing to be part of this event. and. Welcome to the Central Valley, <laughs> virtually. And the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Jesus, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you for setting up this uh, webinar for, for us. We're honored to be working with Civic uh, to create economic opportunity for the immigrant community in California and across the region. Uh, you are great partners, and we are looking forward to a great future together. Um, uh, Trish is going to be working the slides for me. So next slide, please, Trish. So uh, the My Own Business Institute, as um, Jesus mentioned, is part of the Levy School of Business at Santa Clara University. We work with partners all over the world to create uh, economic opportunity for uh, marginalized, under-resourced, and difficult to reach communities. We have a small but uh, effective team who makes this work. Uh, it includes me, uh, Jill Martin, who is our operations and communications manager. And as mentioned, Trish Kaba-Schmidt, uh, who handles our partnerships and our learning management system for us. She'll be speaking uh, shortly. And we have a small team of students that also helps us out. So uh, we're small, but uh, we are effective in uh, pursuing our goals. Moby was founded by Phil and Peggy Holland. Uh, Phil was an entrepreneur and Peggy was an educator. They were both made, motivated by the devastating riots in Los Angeles in 1992. Uh, they wanted to help the community heal and grow and they used their experience and their expertise to start teaching classes on how to, how to start businesses in those communities that were impacted by the riots. In 2000, they put their curriculum online for free for anyone all over the world uh, and created Mobi, uh, a not-for-profit, to uh, support this effort. Uh, in 2014, they came to us at Santa Clara University uh, as a place to continue this mission. Uh, they gave uh, Santa Clara Moby and a generous endowment to ensure that we can continue to offer free training uh, to aspiring business owners forever. Um, our uh, mission and our vision reflect our founding and our commitment to our worldwide community. Our mission is to start businesses that create jobs all over the world. And our vision is that by creating jobs and economic opportunity, uh, Moby promotes a more just, humane, and sustainable world. Uh, Mobi is really a unique resource and the leading provider of free online education for entrepreneurs. We fuel dreams and confidence with accessible education. Uh, we serve students of diverse cultural and educational backgrounds. Our curriculum is accessible worldwide from any device. 
our students can earn a certificate in just uh, 20 hours of work. And our curriculum is engaging, actionable, and understandable. Uh, since 2015, uh, we've had so, an impressive reach and impact. We've uh, had over 100,000 students sign up for classes. We've issued over 10,000 certificates. Uh, our students and alumni are in over 140 countries. Uh, last year, we got over 430,000 visitors to our website. Uh, and many of those visitors were from our 70 plus partners uh, that help us reach into communities on five different continents. Uh, in 2019, we launched our Spanish language uh, website. Uh, it has been a tremendous success in the US and abroad. According to our analytics, the top five Spanish speaking countries utilizing Mobi are Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. Everything on our website is available in both English and in Spanish. Uh, we have the only fully Spanish website connected to Santa Clara University, and we're very proud of that. Uh, now I'd like to turn over the presentation to my colleague, uh, Trish Kaba Schmidt, who will tell you more about our courses and our students. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a true honor to be here and be part of the important work that you guys are doing each and every day. Um, one of the biggest honors of my life uh, that I should probably add to the bio is that uh, I am Moby employee number one. So um, I wanna thank Drew for that first opportunity and the continued opportunity. I tell people I get to play Santa Claus every day because we get to bring this incredible resource to anyone and everyone who needs and wants it to pursue their dreams. Currently, Moby offers four classes. We have a starting a business class, business expansion, the Quick Start Entrepreneur course, as well as our newly added sales and marketing badge short course. So for three of these courses, uh, people can earn a certificate of completion from Santa Clara University. Please note it's not credit bearing, but it is issued by and um, accredited by the university. Um, and then they also will earn that digital badge. Uh, the fourth course is just the digital badge, but of course these can be added to any virtual portfolios or used for professional development purposes or wherever our students would like to do so. Um, as Drew mentioned, our courses are offered in Spanish as well as English. Uh, we've worked with our Department of Modern Languages as well as business leaders in the community to be sure that our translations are relevant and appropriate. So um, it's something we continue to do work on. I'm excited to tell you we are currently in testing for working Chinese as well as Khmer. So each and every day we're trying to broaden the reach to which we can bring Mobi to people. Uh, Mobi consists of 36 different sessions of content. So obviously with, we have those four courses, but when you break it down, um, you can break it down into business planning, financing, management and organization, sales and marketing, business growth, and special topics. So you can look at Moby how we have it presented, or you can go topic by topic, whatever's gonna work best for you and the constituents that you serve. And I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about who our students are. Uh, it's exciting to report we're very balanced in terms of gender. Um, our age is young, but please keep in mind a lot of our partners are those in education. So we do have, we skewed towards the 18 to 24 year olds because of those established partners. But we have anyone 14 to the age of 80 on our site any given day, and we welcome everyone. It's never too early or too late to be earning about, learning about entrepreneurship. Our ethnicity is very diverse, which I'll touch on in the next slide. And uh, as Drew mentioned, we're in 140 different countries currently. Um, and so we're widely dispersed. We are 40% in the US, 8% in Africa, 30% in Asia, and 16% in the Western Hemisphere. A little closer look at our student base where, um, and this comes from self-identification in the survey that we provide to them at the end of the course when they receive their certification. 21% indicated they were white, 19 African American, 24% Asian, and 11% Latino. Our top categories of uh, businesses or that people are interested in or that they're going to start are um, in these top six categories, business and professional services, retail and online sales, 
personal services, educational services, technology and information services, restaurants, food service, and hospitality. But I think we all know that uh, entrepreneurship is ever growing and ever changing. And even post pandemic, we may see new different and different kinds of businesses continue to emerge. Um, we are honored to report that 88% uh, of people agree to strongly agree that Moby increases the chance of a new business to be successful after taking these courses. And 95% would recommend Moby to a friend or colleague. So in a world where we're all striving to be perfect, but it's nearly impossible, we will definitely take that 95%. Um, the topics students found most helpful are the business planning, accounting, and cash flow, deciding on a business, license, and permits, business organization, marketing, and e-commerce. I'm just gonna introduce um, a little bit more about our partnerships. Please know that we are always here to serve as a resource um, in any which capacity that you would like to utilize us. If you would like to go the partnership route with us, we would love to have you. We offer two different kinds of partnerships. The first is affiliate, which is a direct referral from your site in which you are just directing your constituents to us. Um, you're, you, want, you wanna recommend some training, you wanna recommend a topic, you want them to get a certification and then come back to you and have a conversation. So you're literally just linking your site and your constituents to us. They come in, they take what we call one of those open courses, those four courses I talked about, and we are happy to serve you that way. Another way and a very special way in which we work with our partners is that we offer the option for a collaborative course. And this is actually how we're working with Civic and um, we have worked with many other partners in the past. And that's when we're working with and for specific populations and we make a customized course, meaning we work with you, our partner, to evaluate what your students need and want to learn and achieve their goals. We design that course specifically to your needs. So taking those 36 sessions, we ask that you use 10, putting it together in the order and the timing that you like. And then we also offer the option for you to add information, resources to your course pending any copyright laws. Uh, so we wanna be there to be a very effective and efficient resource for you as you're doing your training. Um, you can always reach out to, to us if you're interested in partnership or write on our partnership uh, page on our website, there's an interest form that you can fill out. What, what's important to keep in mind is that access and opportunity continue to be the paramount when we're finding and evaluating partnerships. We see our partnerships as our liaison, and you're what breathes life into Moby. You bring people to us, and we work together for them to get some training and achieve their goals. So we really see our partnerships as a cornerstone to all of our success. Um, we, as Drew mentioned, we actually partner with over 70 different organizations um, across the U.S. and the world. Uh, as you can see, Civic is there, Immigrants Rising is on there, which I know that they were scheduled to be on the call. Uh, we work with the Latino Business Foundation, uh, Yakinex Community, Kiva, Opportunity Fund. So please keep in mind that we are committed to partnering with community leader, leaders and organizations that make our content um, more inclusive and accessible. Some of the other partners that we are proud to, to mention just briefly are the My Bluefield uh, community, in, which is in Bluefield, West Virginia, and they're an Intuit Prosperity Hub. So they are looking to bring the community back together there, offering jobs, offering training, and we're actually part of a grant program with them. Uh, we are honored to say our longest standing partnership is with St. Alo Aloysius in Mangalore, India. Um, and we've been with them since 2014, and over a thousand students from their school have gone through our program. Uh, we are honored to serve as the primary training for the state of New York SEEPS program, which is our self-employment assistance program. And then also we are stable for uh, the state of South Carolina and their one-stop resources for businesses. Moby is always continuing to listen and learn through our relationships with partners like you. We are constantly getting the feedback we need to improve not only our curriculum, but the way that we deliver it. So please know that that is something good or bad. We want to hear about what's happening on your side so we can continue to make Moby better for everyone. Um, what's next for us is actually audio and video files. Um, 
As Drew mentioned, we focus on accessible education. So a lot of our courses right now are offered in text with a few videos and some great resources. Right now, our courses are not overly gamified, and that is because of internet access. Um, this is something Moby and many of you were aware of before the pandemic, but got really exacerbated during the pandemic, is that not everybody has Wi-Fi. Not everybody has a free data plan. So when we were offering courses, we wanted to make sure that if you had the option to hop online or you have data, you can hop on and access this very quickly without the use of a lot of data or the use of a lot of time. Um, but that being said, we want to make things better. We know that people are stuck in traffic, especially in, the, uh, in California. Um, they're either on a train, they're on a bus, they're driving their car, or you know they're at home or um, they're watching their children. And we want to make it so people could listen to Moby versus just read it. So we are hoping to accomplish that project in the next year. And then, of course, curriculum expansion. Curriculum is just like a new car. The second you drive it off the lot or the second you publish it, there's something new coming behind it. Uh, Moby has a great strategy, and we look at five or more different sessions a year in which we update, change, or add to to be sure that our curriculum is relevant and meeting people where they need to be today. This is just a quick view about what our website and our learning management site look like. Um, on the left, you will see our scu.edu backslash Moby site, and anyone can tap on here at any time. If they just want to learn about marketing or they want to learn about cash flow, and they just want to get that single bit of information, we offer everything we offer on our learning management side on the normal website. People access the learning management site so that they can earn that certificate of completion. Uh, you earn a certificate of completion by passing that final exam with an 80% or better. Uh, we do offer unlimited tries, though we don't want to make this an impossible task for people. We just want to have a benchmark of success. So depending what your constituents' goals are, maybe it's just to learn bits and pieces of information. For others, maybe they would want to earn that certificate of completion or earn that digital badge and they would do that on our learning management side. Oh, sorry. Oh, I clicked on the thing. So <laughs> just in case you wanted to know, here's actually what an active look at our learning management site looks like, and I'm gonna hop back. And then that is actually it. I wanna thank you for taking the time to listen to us and know that we are anxious and willing to talk to anyone who might be interested uh, we would just love to and be honored to be a part of the great work that you're doing. Trish and Drew, thank you very much for the presentation. And we'll have an opportunity for question and answer uh, shortly. Uh, but first, I'd like to um, introduce everyone to Mike Temali, Shahir Ahmed, and Steve DeBogman, who are here representing uh, the Build From Within Alliance. Mike is the founder and CEO of the Neighborhood Development Center since 1993 and the founder and CEO of the Build From Within Alliance since 2014. Very briefly about uh, the Build From Within Alliance, in partnership with many community groups, NDC has trained over 6,000 low-income entrepreneurs since 1993 in an 11-week business plan course. Over 600 are in business today with 85% owners of color, heavily located in their own low-income neighborhood with over 60% occupying previously vacant commercial spaces. NDC provides character-based financing, over $3 million overall, and one-on-one -on -one comprehensive business assistance with over 5,000 hours per year to most of these entrepreneurs. NDC is a CDFI, SBA, and RIVA free lender, focusing on startup and growing inner city businesses. NDC is co-owner, developer, and manager of six business incubators, including Midtown Global Market, Mercado Central, Frogtown Square, and Frogtown Crossroads. The Build From Within Alliance is a peer alliance of 14, is it 15, Mike? <laughs> now we're the 15th community-based organizations across the country who have adopted and adapted this NDC four-pillar model. Training, lending, TA, and affordable space of working with low, very low income entrepreneurs in low income neighborhoods of color. They learn and share from each other and from NDC throughout the year and work together to raise capacity, impact, and awareness of this comprehensive place-based approach to supporting the rise of low, very low income neighborhood entrepreneurs of color. Civic joined the Build From Within Alliance earlier this year. Um, we couldn't be happier and prouder to be members of the Alliance. Our staff has already begun to go through some of the trainings 
including a conference that was just held in Alaska uh, a month ago. So we wanted to share with the Central Valley partners also the information and the contacts also with this incredibly valuable national alliance. Um, so it's all yours, Mike, Shahir, Steve. Thank you once again for being part of this event. And it's all yours. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here. And um, we're particularly honored to uh, be partnered with Civic, uh, who we just met maybe a year, a year and a half ago, uh, and have been nothing but uh, impressed with the work that is done at that great organization. And uh, so to be here with all of you today in this network is a, uh, an honor and a pleasure as well. Um, I believe Shahir is going to share his screen for this PowerPoint because I'm not, I don't have it. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right. So um, what we're all about is community development through entrepreneurship. And by community, we mean neighborhoods, but we also mean ethnic communities. Um, and in particular, communities that have had a um, a long history of struggle for all sorts of reasons. Uh, this is an image from the Frogtown neighborhood in St. Paul, which is actually where I'm sitting right now, uh, historic uh, low-income uh, neighborhood. Uh, and this is Big Daddy's Barbecue, um, which uh, was out here on this corner for 25 years, I believe. So next slide, please. Um, what we do is um, put our faith and our uh, effort behind uh, these amazing entrepreneurs that are um, from these communities. They typically um, are overlooked, I guess, as an asset by uh, so many different uh, uh, governments and uh, economic development players. But to us, they're the, um, they're the gold uh, in these neighborhoods. And if we can connect with them, if they can uh, trust us enough, uh, to work with us and let us uh, help them with their vision, um, they transform their own community. That's why we call it Build From Within. Um, we do this in areas of concentrated poverty. Uh, in our case, in the Twin Cities, it's uh, uh, ten, the 10 lowest income neighborhoods of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, and in the Build From Within Alliance that Jesus referenced, uh, we have community organizations in, in 14 other cities that work in a variety of settings. Uh, Civic being one of them. Next slide, please. Uh, we've been doing this now for over or almost uh, 30 years, I guess. And uh, this really came about by combining uh, the practices and goals of community development corporations, which is sort of neighborhood by neighborhood on the ground, combined with lessons from international microfinance. Um, whether it's Grameen Bank in Bangladesh or Acción in Latin America or wherever. Um, and then uh, community organizing. And I think um, many of you, if not most of you, are uh, part of uh, these three industries. And so there's a lot of uh, principles, a lot of value, values, a lot of practices that uh, we combined into how we go about doing this work. Um, and you'll see in a minute, we, we do this out in all these different communities, um, but we, we fundamentally start with uh, what we call four, four pillars of our model, um, which is the four things we feel these entrepreneurs need to really start a business and succeed in their own neighborhood. And that's training, lending, technical assistance, uh, and then a place to do their business. So next slide, please. Um, we primarily work, like I said, in these very low-income neighborhoods. They're usually um, either black neighborhoods, Latino neighborhoods. Uh, uh, we have a lot of immigrants here in the Twin Cities from Somalia, from Laos, the Hmong population, um, Ethiopia, Latin America, uh, Native American communities, and so on. So, uh, And these are communities historically that have been... Uh, kept out of the uh, mainstream economy by all sorts of um, very explicit racist uh, systems, including redlining. This is a map of um, the, our city, Minneapolis and St. Paul, uh, with the Mississippi River kind of winding through it. But everything you see in red were 
neighborhoods that were redlined by the banking industry and by the federal government, uh, home mortgage industry. And so it's no wonder that folks in those neighborhoods um, remained uh, low income and out of out of the out of the system that we have in this country to build uh, their own family wealth uh, because they couldn't they couldn't uh, get a mortgage to buy a house if they were even allowed to do that. And this was just one of the systems that kept a lot of these neighborhoods down. Um, uh, this is essentially the same neighborhoods you just saw in red, but these are where we work. These are the these are the eight lowest income neighborhoods of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And recently we added uh, Brooklyn Park and uh, Brooklyn Center, which are uh, near inner ring suburbs. But every little dot you see on here is one of the entrepreneurs that uh, is open today in business. And you can see how they're pretty heavily concentrated in those eight neighborhoods, although not exclusively. And you can also see how they're uh, pretty heavily um, uh, located along some main commercial corridors. And that's a very deliberate uh, strategy we have because we're trying to change these communities from within, as we say. And the more we can fill vacancies with uh, folks from these neighborhoods with successful business, the more that neighborhood starts to starts to uh, revive and uh, get more safe and get more exciting and have more jobs, uh, you know, really build out their market. So collectively here, our uh, 650 uh, businesses have over 2,200 jobs who are almost entirely folks from these same neighborhoods. So next next slide, please. This is just a quick snapshot of the, the country where uh, each of these dots, the bigger it is, the more uh, the more there was systematic redlining by the banking uh, industry, the home mortgage industry, um, historically. And this practice wasn't outlawed until the late 60s, early 70s. Um, and it still, honestly, continues in certain ways and in other, in other, uh, with other methods. So. Um, Twin Cities obviously is not the only place that has experienced uh, this type of uh, systematic disparity. And that's why our uh, approach, which is very comprehensive, long-term in specific communities, uh, uh, has had a lot of success, but it's a long, slow process. You don't change decades and decades of uh, systematic exclusion uh, easily uh, or uh, uh, overnight or uh, cheap, cheaply. I mean, the country needs to invest in in uh, reversing what that effect was. So, the folks we work with come from lots of different places, um, and so language is often a barrier. Uh, almost exclusively, they're not able to obtain bank financing um, either because their credit isn't great or they don't have uh, collateral or. A lot of them are, most of them are startups. And so banks, as you know, don't like to do startup financing and they're real small businesses. Anyways, uh, they also need access to uh, lawyers and accountants and uh, marketing expertise uh, for their particular business. And that's something we provide. Um, connecting with other entrepreneurs in the same boat as them is uh, uh, an important feature. Uh, go back one step here, Shahir. I didn't see the last two there. Oh, dude. Uh, go the other way. There you go. <laughs> um, the cultural and religious barriers. Uh, one in particular to highlight: we have a high percentage of, uh, like I said, Somali and Ethiopian uh, community members that are Islamic uh, in faith, and uh, their religion um, bars them from accepting uh, or paying interest on money, and so. You know, that's a type of a barrier that this refers to. And then in general, trusting institutions, whether it's banks or universities or uh, not Santa Clara, everybody trusts them, but um, uh, government, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's a huge issue. So gaining the trust of folks enough to where we can work with them is a huge issue. And every one of you on this webinar, that's what you do. You're in the community. So they tr folks trust you. And that's sort of the main uh, DNA uh, in your approach to working with them. I know that. All right, so next slide, please. Um, this is just some quick uh, uh, statistics, but again, high percentage of people of color and uh, basically 50-50 male and female. Uh, high percentage of folks that, that um, just finished high school uh, or less. Um, uh, 
And, uh, but fundamentally it's very low uh, income folks. So uh, it's um, in terms of the area median income, I believe it's like 85% or 90% of who we work with are people below the area median income. This here says uh, below the federal poverty line. So anyways, uh, that's who we focus on. And that's counterintuitive to most business schools, obviously, because that's not, that's not quite the equation for uh, ease of getting into business, um, but that's why we do it uh, as an organization uh, and our groups around the country do it as well. So next slide, please. So in our city, we work uh, in a hub and spoke uh, model, which is where we have all these different partnerships uh, with community groups, with churches, with uh, ethnic organizations, uh, black clubs, et cetera. Um, who have the connection with their own folks in their own community, as well as the trust of those people and the, uh, the culture, the language, et cetera. And the, you know, they're accessible to their own folks uh, and the networks. And then we bring the training out to them. Uh, they, each of these groups uh, hosts these classes. They're the front of the room. We're always in the back of the room. Um, and we can provide these organizations uh, all the resources necessary to make their entrepreneurs successful. Mm -hmm. um, but we want the, or the community organization to be front and center uh, and maintain the relationship with each entrepreneur as they go through this process. So next slide, please. This is just a, uh, a little slide of some of the neighborhood groups uh, and ethnic groups that we've worked with recently over the years. I believe it's 40 or 50 uh, groups that we've uh, partnered with, and they host their training classes in their own offices, like I said. And um, these are 11 two hour sessions uh, in person uh, or nowadays virtually um, with a trainer from that same community. Um, so we, we really make accessibility uh, fundamental to uh, these folks getting uh, this type of support. So, again, here's the four pillars uh, that we provide to each entrepreneur. So it starts with writing a business plan for their own business idea out in these community settings. Um, uh, the financing we do, we've done over $30 million of financing in our history, and it's mostly smallish loans, anywhere from you know, a couple thousand bucks up to 350,000. Um, but it's character-based for the most part. It's not, I mean, if they can get a loan from a bank or even part of a loan from a bank, that's where they go to do it, but they're not, uh, almost ever able to do that, at least initially. Uh, over time, uh, like a second or third year into business, then we can help them get uh, uh, a bank loan for their next step. The technical assistance is a whole range, like I mentioned, of expertise they get free of charge from us, uh, although we'll try to charge them a little sliding fee if they, if they can afford it. But our uh, vast majority, we get uh, pro bono legal for them. We provide uh, help. Uh, actually, we'll set up uh, their websites and some social media. We'll, we'll have a restaurant expertise help them with the layout of the restaurant, uh, navigating city requirements, et cetera. So, it's a, again, it's a costly program, but it's what it takes to really get these particular people in business and successful. And then the incubators, as was mentioned, uh, we have half a dozen buildings that we've purchased and renovated or built from the ground up over the years to house these folks in their own neighborhoods, uh, always at high visibility location so they can inspire their neighbors uh, to come down this entrepreneur path as well. So next slide, please. Uh, so Bill from Within Alliance, as was mentioned. Uh, <clears throat> next slide, please. Um, we have uh, the 15th uh, member here being Civic. Uh, but we're in all these different uh, cities around the United States. And every one of these uh, groups, um, as Jesus said, adopted and adapted the model, which is to say that every community is different, every organization is different. Um, but the fundamental values of working with low to very low income uh, folks starting where they're at and being comprehensive about working with them all the way into uh, not only opening their shop, but uh, we, we keep stepping with them for years afterwards as needed, uh, either as a lender, a TA provider, or even a landlord. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, this was our picture of the folks up in uh, Anchorage, and you see uh, Clarice and Anna should be in there somewhere, and a little baby. There should be, a, oh, there's the baby. That little child was the star of the show, I'll tell you that. Um, but anyways, yeah, we had a wonderful um, three-day convening, and these are all people that are actually then implementing this model uh, everywhere. It's from Miami to Anchorage and Fresno to Syracuse. So next slide, please. Um, and I'm gonna skip over this quick because I know we're running short on time here, Jesus, but basically these groups uh, all interact with each other constantly. They're supportive of each other. They help each other um, solve problems, uh, learn about new ideas, um, and they serve roughly the same kinds of people that I've been talking about. Um, so with that, I'll uh, turn it back to you, Jesus. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Shahir and Steve, uh, any comments, additional information you'd like to make? Then why don't we open it up for uh, our partners in the Central Valley. If you have questions or comments for our invited uh, presenters today from Moby and Bill from Within, please raise your hand and we'll um, enable you to speak and ask a question. You can also write in the chat box, but I think it's, if it's possible to, um, to talk, you'll be able to do so. As we wait for people to raise a hand, um, can I ask you all, um, Trish, Mike, Drew, if you can include your um, contact information in the chat box? Thank you, Connie, for the comment. A quick question for Trish and Drew. If someone is interested in, in partnership, partnering with you, um, what is the process for establishing that partnership in either of the two options that you mentioned in your presentation? Do you want me to go? Absolutely, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Um, obviously, we've had a we've had a brief introduction today, so um, you can directly email me um, if you'd like to set up a call. Um, you know, so we can either do it, you know, literally a call or a Zoom call like this for us just to learn more about each other and how we might be able to collaborate together and see what might be a best fit for you at the time. Otherwise, if you do go to our website, which I'll put in the chat box. Um, if you go to our partnership page, there's actually a form there that you can submit that you're interested in partnership and it asks you a little bit more about your organization. Um, so either way is great with us. Um, I do want to warn you all that we're, Drew and I are going to send out an email in the next two days uh, right back to you all with some more information about us and also our contact information. We know you're all very busy. So if it's a little bit easier to, to just reply to us once you hear from us, we are welcome to that as well. And for us, um, you know, we work uh, with, a, with a lead organization in a uh, particular community and, and region, and that's Civic, uh, so far in the Central Valley. Um, as I showed on the one slide, we have a hub and spoke model here in the Twin Cities, but so do some of these other groups that are part of the Build From Within Alliance. Uh, the group out of Wilmington, Delaware, works all over their state. The group in, in uh, Detroit is uh, works all over that city, which is as big as Delaware, I think, or if not bigger. Um, and um, so anyways, um, if this is something of interest, um, you know, I'd say connect with uh, Jesus, Ana, and Clarissa, um, and uh, we can uh, join the conversation right away and think about how to how uh, would it make sense to uh, you know build out this this body of work in the Central Valley because it's obviously huge uh, so you know um, you really you have to design design it such that it can work in your particular 
uh, communities uh, and your region. And we do that uh, initially through uh, Civic. Thank you. For the colleagues in the Central Valley, can you also tell us uh, what programs you have in place already or what um, population groups you would like to work on in the development of a self-employment entrepreneurial program? Go ahead, Nora. Hi, good morning, every everyone. Just thank you for the wonderful information. Um, here at the Education Leadership Foundation, what we are trying to focus on is um, helping um, individuals through our economic justice uh, program, how to help individuals who are undocumented um, become independent contractors and formally, you know, um, help uh, help uh, navigate through, you know, what it's like to get your fictitious business name, you know, just start all of that process. And then um, one of the things that I definitely see them come, them moving on to is once they finish that process, joining Mobi so that way they actually learn these entrepreneurial, um, uh, you, they learn in, in these sessions on how to um, if they're, say, for example, if they already have their business um, or if they're just starting, how to, I guess, not properly do it, but how to do it in a way where they're able to um, to outreach to more individuals and, you know, just get um, just get the, the ball rolling um, in order for them to promote their services. So that's what I uh, where we're um, interested in. And like I said, I would very much love to um, touch bases with uh, with you guys at a later time. Um, to see how we can go about maybe a partnership or even um, even just, you know, guidance, anything would be great. Nora, could you uh, share with our, our guests the population groups, the communities you serve in particular? Of course. So um, ALF, uh, we serve um, the undocumented, um, undocumented population, uh, low income, uh, farm working uh, communities. Um, Sometimes they have low educational attainment. So we're very, we try to cater um, essentially just to the, the migrant, you know, community. And that looks, you know, very, you know, different. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's typically the population that we serve. Thank you, Dora. Other colleagues from the Central Valley? Because I know some of you have really um, well-developed programs already that you'd like to share the information with the rest of the partners that are present in the webinar or with the guests. Connie, would you like to uh, speak and talk a little bit about what you want to do? You're enabled, Connie. Yes, I'd like to find more about the uh, educational part of it and how to get started. Also, the um, financial part of it for the entrepreneurs. Okay. And that's specifically the contact with uh, Moby, correct? Yeah, Connie, we'd be glad to reach out to you and set up a meeting to tell you more, um, both for you and Nora and anyone else who's still on the call. One thing about us offering accessible education is we don't make any assumptions about people's business acumen or their education. So we say whether you do or do not have a high school degree or you do or not have a PhD, Moby is written in a way just to be very understandable and actionable. Um, some great work that we've done with Civic um, is that uh, for their custom course that they'll be launching here soon, um, they actually went through and made some language changes to make it even more accessible. So um, we are definitely um, all ears in terms of ways that we can make it better and more usable for you and your constituents. Um, unfortunately, we do not offer any funding. Um, our um, our, the money that has been given to us is for educational purposes only, but we hope through going through Moby and learning those steps and uh, potentially earning their certificate, it would make them 
uh, be viewed very positively in terms of writing their business plan and or receiving some type of funding. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Trish. Other colleagues? Well, let me ask a, a quick question to the colleagues from the Central Valley. Can you uh, write in the chat box very quickly whether you already have an entrepreneurship related program in place? If you can say write very quickly, yes, and we already have one. Or if you would like to develop one, can you write in the chat box? I will, we, we do not have one, but we'd like to develop one just to see where we're at with each of the partner organizations present. Ileana. <laughs> An amazing program that you have already. I just want to mention and also highlight Ileana from Immigrants Rising. Um, they receive funding from the state of California through the SEED program that last in the last 12 months awarded millions of dollars in mini grants all over the state, including to about 285, if I'm not mistaken, immigrants from the Central Valley who received five or $10,000 grants. So thank you, Liana, for being very um, much concerned with also making that available to colleagues in the Central Valley. So we're finding Maida, they are CDFI, they are Michael Lender, Carlos of CCEJN. Thank you, Carlos. Other colleagues, so we can learn more about it. And the follow-up question that I have for all, of course, is what interest do you have in initiating a regional dialogue to help improve organizational capacity to address immigrant entrepreneurship? Um, thank you, Eduardo. One of our partner organizations also, CSU Fresno. What interest do you have in developing a regional dialogue so we can begin to improve our own individual organizational capacity and also build the capacity of the American communities that we work with in, individually. Juanita uh, Chaveste, they don't have a, a program, but are interested from Oasis. So if you're interested in starting a regional dialogue, what would you like to do as a next step um, have a webinar, have an in-person meeting. Thank you, Carlos and Eduardo. As a, as a first step, um, I think one of the things that we need to do is really get to know more about what each organization does. That's something that would be an initial step in that direction. So webinar, webinar. Well, at least online meeting. Several are into the in-person meeting as well. Thank you, Maricela, webinar. So let's, we'll follow up with um, colleagues in the, thank you, Javier who are registered and set up a, an upcoming online meeting to discuss this. But right now, let's take advantage of the presence of our, our guests from Moby and Build From Within. Any last minute questions, comments, requests for assistance that you would like to make? Because we have found both to be not only extremely willing to engage in conversations with us, but also to enable us to develop our own understanding of the resources that exist for immigrant entrepreneurship, in our case in particular. Any last comments or questions for our guests? Well, uh, thank you all then. Um, we're coming to an end for the meeting. So we'll follow up with all of you via email to all those who registered and then follow up on this next steps. 
to set up perfectly an initial meeting and via Zoom and begin to discuss what each organization does, what it's interested in doing in order to develop this regional dialogue. Thank you all for your attendance. And once again, we're going to be, um, we are recording this event. We're going to be uploading it to the civic.org website in a couple of days. Give us a little bit of time to process it. And I want to uh, finally, uh, obviously thank our guest speakers, Trish Drew from Santa Clara University, my own business institute, Mike and Shahir from Build From Within Alliance. It is the first of what we hope will be a series of such events this um, coming 12 months, but we're very grateful that you were able to take this time for your business schedules. Trish told us this is the third presentation she's doing today. <laughs> so uh, good luck with the rest of the meetings and the events today, everyone. Thank you very much. And we'll follow up with everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Honor.